Um, I'm going to talk about our LCN Center at um, what is now called Duke Health. Um, and um, the main um, drivers of this program are myself and Tara West, who is our pediatric nurse practitioner. Next slide. Um, so Duke has a long-standing commitment to treating children with leukodystrophies. Uh, we pioneered cordless transplantation for, for children with inherited metabolic diseases over 20 years ago. We performed over 360 transplants in kids with these diagnoses, 58 of which were in babies and children with Crebe disease. Um, in our genetics and metabolism group, uh, they developed myozyme, the enzyme therapy for Pompe disease. Um, through the transplant program, we have a comprehensive care program to support patients, both through transplantation and for long-term follow-up. We're doing novel research to improve outcomes. Uh, we've been big advocates for newborn screening, and we have an ongoing commitment to improve care, quality of life, and research for children with leukodystrophies and inherited metabolic diseases. And I think we have a very good understanding of the challenges that uh, are still before us. Next slide. Our philosophy is to deliver the highest quality, comprehensive family-centered care to children cared for at Duke. We treat the whole child and their family and support them through diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up care. And we really have a goal to learn from every child and every family so that we can make things better for the next child and their family. Next slide. Um, these are the uh, key players in the program right now. I'm the program director, Vinod Prasad um, is the uh, assistant director. He replaced Kristen Page, who we Unfortunately, lost to uh, Wisconsin, but she will take care of patients there with leukodystrophies. Our neurologist is Mohammed Makadi, head of medical genetics is Priya Kishnani. Uh, we have a new pediatric rehab program, and Dr. Christopher Lunsford leads that uh, group. Laura Case is uh, our physical therapist, Rick Kravitz, our pulmonologist. Tara, as I mentioned, our lead PMP. And we have other PMPs dedicated to the program, uh, Colleen McLaughlin and Tanya Jolly. And our nurse coordinator is Jane Cash. Next slide. Um, we have an extended team, like many centers, that includes our family support program, which I'll talk about in a minute, social work, dietitians, child life, financial counselors, housing coordinators, hospital school, art and music therapy, uh, physical occupational speech therapy, um, a brace shop for orthopedic inter interventions, and a durable medical equipment provider team. Next slide. Um, our facilities include our inpatient hospital. We have a 16 bed inpatient unit that um, in 1980, when it was built, was very innovative because it had private rooms. But over time, as other um, hospitals have been built, it's become very clear that our rooms are too small for our patient rooms and that we didn't have enough space for parents to stay in the room with their child. Um, and uh, Duke built a new inpatient tower. Uh, and the bone marrow transplant unit is moving into that tower, we think fourth quarter of 2021. Um, it's built and, and it's open. The floor we're moving into is on the fourth floor and being sequentially open. But the good news is that um, it's 17 beds and um, the patient rooms are three times as large as the, one, as the ones we currently have and have much better space for parents to essentially live in with their children. Uh, we also have a clinic which has a day hospital. Um, it's adjacent to the inpatient units and it's open seven days a week, uh, 12 hours a day. And then on our inpatient unit, we have a room where patients who are outpatients but need to be seen can be seen by our group at night. And we have typical things you'll find in a children's hospital, but pediatric sedation suites for procedures, pediatric operating rooms and recovery rooms. Um, I'll just mention as it relates to, neuro, to um, leukodystrophies that we have dedicated groups for neuroimaging, neurophysiologic testing and neuropsych testing. 
Um, and we've incorporated telemedicine because of COVID into many of our research protocols and follow-up algorithms. Uh, Duke has rehab therapy in a therapy pool um, and um, compounding pharmacy for children. Uh, we have many uh, specialized laboratories that service the program that includes our stem cell transplant la laboratory, our GMP cell manufacturing laboratory, which um, produces cells that are more than minimally manipulated for non-homologous use, um, a FDA licensed public cord blood bank, uh, which has about 46,000 units on site. Um, and uh, robust quality and regulatory groups. Next slide. Um, this is just a picture of our clinic and our day hospital um, where um, children are seen. And I'll mention outpatients who are not being transplanted but are getting enzyme therapy or intrafecal therapies or some of the newer modality therapies are treated in the day hospital. Next slide, please. Next slide. Oops. <laughs> um, I wanna give a shout out to our family support program, which is something we established almost 25 years ago now. Um, it's completely supported by philanthropy, but it provides services for families that health insurance doesn't cover. And that includes lodging and housing, um, the school, uh, our child life program, uh, all kinds of programs for support and play activities on our unit. Um, and um, uh, financial programs to support costs that families encounter when they come to centers for long periods of time that again are not covered by insurance. Next slide. Um, the family support program has many programs to incentivize kids to get out of bed, but our one of our most famous one is called Super Steppers, and we have Super Steppers of the day, the week, the month, the year, <laughs> uh, and pen ultimate Super Steppers, but kids get feet that they keep on this necklace um, for certain distances that they walk while they're in the hospital and while they're receiving uh, care at Duke. Next slide. And we have all the pediatric subspecialists that would typically be in a large medical center. I'm not gonna go through the list. Next slide. Um, for treatment, um, we have treatment that's intended for curative intent. We have research therapies, we have supportive care and palliative care. The treatments for um, cur with curative intent currently include hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, using related and unrelated donors, Cord blood, bone marrow, and mobilized blood sources. We're developing other cell therapies for leukodystrophies. One is DUOC, a microglia-like cell we're giving in a phase one clinical trial intrathecally to bridge engraftment of the central nervous system after transplant. Um, we're, and that, that study is really finished it was a safety study. We know that um, the cells are safe and we have hints that they have efficacy, but we really can't assess efficacy in a study where we're combining the therapy with transplant. So we just opened a study in adults with primary progressive MS. Uh, DUOC is given as an intrathecal dose and the MS patients will receive DUOC alone, so not with a transplant and not after any kind of myeloblative therapy. And we hope to be able to answer the question about whether DUOC has efficacy in that group. It's a very interesting cell because it induces remyelination of the brain in experimental systems. Um, we're also uh, performing studies with umbilical cord tissue mesenchymal stromal cells. These are cells we manufacture from donated cord tissue to our bank. They're manufactured in our GMP lab. They have anti-inflammatory properties, and we are using them to treat in an experimental fashion under INDs intravenously, children with leukodystrophies that are not eligible for transplant, but may benefit from anti-inflammatory studies, or therapy, sorry. And then through our metabolism and genetics group, ERT is given, um, and we plan to participate in for leukodystrophy gene therapy studies. We already participate in gene therapy studies for hemoglobinopathies. Um, 
and then we have all of the um, components of supportive care and palliative care in place. Next slide. So I'll just mention it takes a village. There are literally hundreds of people involved with all of the programs that I mentioned. Um, and, um, you know, I think when families come to Duke, we provide comprehensive care to the best of our ability. And these are just some pictures of some of the kids we've treated, but I'll mention the three kids in the middle who went with us to the FDA uh, to uh, make sure that when cord blood was licensed as a source of donor cells for transplantation, that the indication for treating kids with inherited metabolic diseases and leukodystrophies was covered. So little boy in the plaid shirt has ALD and had a cord blood transplant at two and a half years of age. He's now in college. Little girl on the right has uh, MPS1 and uh, was transplanted at a year of age um, uh, and is now in college. And the little girl in the blue shirt has Crab A, was transplanted at 19 days of age and is now in high school, um, just as an ex illustration of uh, kind of what we've been doing for a long time and how cord blood transplant can be effective in these populations. So thank you very much.